<laughs> Welcome back, everybody. This is Night Flight, and today we have Sonia Barrett back in the house. Very happy to see her. She's a documentary filmmaker. She does workshops and writes articles. Her website is soniabarrett.com. There's you're getting some static. Really? It, I think it's, um, yeah, I think it's the mic probably be rubbing on. So <laughs> I hope the static went away. I, so, I don't hear it. <laughs> okay, great. So Sonia, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. So um, you did, um, if I remember correctly, you did an article about higher consciousness and what that is or a, a workshop or something like that? Oh, I did, I did a workshop um, uh, maybe just a couple, maybe a month ago. And it had to do with understanding consciousness and the global system, uh, the matrix of a country, state or town. City, well, like the matrix of a country, state, city or town, that's, what it was about and um yeah so I, I did it was it was a little different um but i certainly did again oh okay and and the subtitle the rest of the subtitle was a game of founders governments rules contracts and agreements yeah and i was thinking before you know higher consciousness i find that is an interesting subject but i also think that <clears throat> before we uh before we start to um, achieve that, don't we need, you know, sometimes an environment that is dependable? Because right now, the last 18 months, you know, lie after lie after lie after lie. And now we have um, reached a point where people will tell you, well, <clears throat> here's a bottle of sunscreen. I want you to put that sunscreen on so that I don't get a burn. And hardly anyone, and yes, it's a metaphor. Yeah. <laughs> and hardly anybody, um, you know, questions that. So before we can achieve higher consciousness, shouldn't we, you know, have an environment where we can operate and not always have to check what is a lie, what is correct? what are your thoughts yeah well this was um this workshop was as i said understanding consciousness and the global system so th this was uh, a little bit um different i would say than just the idea of just achieving uh, overall higher consciousness because i i sort of at the time wanted wanted people to if they weren't awake to these realizations that they kind of wake up to the fact that a country, every country is in its own way, a business, it's a matrix, it's a system. Um, it's someone else's design. It's someone else's game. Uh, all the, everything about it is just someone else's construct. And, you know, we are all in this thing, in this game, participating. And so I think that in order to be able to achieve any higher level of awareness or consciousness, I think one needs to really wake up to where you are, you know, just wake up to, to this. And, and that was kind of tough in a way, um, just wanting to really get people to get that big picture. And I, I still don't know if people get that big picture, but the big picture was when you talk about your country, you know, people talk about their country, I get it with pride and just many, many conversations that they'll have about, you know, the, their rights and, um, you know, what the constitution says and all of these things. But I wanted people to step back and go, whoa, listen, listen, listen to what you're saying. It's a system, it's a construct. When we talk about the founding fathers, they're people that founded a space on land, on, and maybe you know, put some boundaries 
around that space, decided to give it a name, uh, decided to create some rules and conditions for it, made it contractual. Um, so we all went into go into contract with these places, which is why you have to have visas and you know go through immigration and all this stuff because it's a construct that someone else and that someone else might have had this idea and a dream and then it became a group of people that get together and uh, and form this this club like in the United States, you know, the United States, it's a series of um, other states that technically were like individual countries that come together to be part of this club. And Canada obviously said they weren't going to be part of the club in that aspect, but they still function the same way the U.S. does. So every country, people need to wake up and realize you are in a game system that someone put together and um, and and come and and created rules and laws and regulations, and told you, and and constructed rules for you and guidelines as to how that game that they created. If you're in Germany, mm -hmm. uh, you know what are the rules for this mass of land that we have created borders around and said, oh, this is going to be Germany, okay. And anybody who wants to be part of it, which is then you call it your citizens, are now part of this game. Well, here are the rules. And in this game, we're going to give you some rights. We're going to say what you can do, what you can't do, because it's our game and you're in it and you're playing it. I don't think people get that. So we get all wound up about, you know, and I'm not saying anybody shouldn't be proud of their country, but they need to wake up to, you know, it's somebody else's game that you're inside of playing. And those, and, and those people have created restrictions. They have, they have created restrictions for you, made us think that they decide what our rights are. So we are all fighting for, well, wait, wait you, you're, you know, that um, you're taking away our, our rights. Well, the reason why they can feel like they can do that is because it's their game. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's their game. Everybody somehow ends up in contract in, in, in all the countries in, in the game by to your parents, your parents through your, you know, the whole signing you up because because all the countries, they, they need to know who was born, when you were born, what Birth time you were born, yeah. your name, all that stuff. That's because now you're you're part of the game. And if you're part of it, you're part of a, a contractual agreement. And now all the these are all the benefits. These are all the frills of the game. And this is what you get if you're part of our game. And you you said yes to it. Your parents said yes to it. And it's just the whole thing that just goes on and on and on like that. So for me, until people can just wake up to realizing, oh, shoot, this is what I'm playing. I'm not saying you don't play anymore, but you become a different kind of player when you wake up and you get it that this I'm inside this this thing. OK, what how can I navigate around this? and realize even in that moment when you have to follow what the rules are, that you are simply a game player. You, nobody has ownership over you, but in this game, you're operating under the guidelines of the rules of this game because we've agreed to it. And so if the, if the system all over the world, it's now made, made it a little bit more difficult for people to operate off the grid because there's satellites everywhere. There's so much technology that um, pinpoints everything, you know, the, the uh, what do you call it? Heat, heat sensors, um, you know, um, what do you call it? Uh, technology that sees through walls. I mean, there's so much that's there now. And recognizing that fact that that's, that's what we're working with, um, and then that's that's when people get to assert what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. 
you know, um, and I think to me, that's the whole reason for understanding that, seeing that, for waking up to that, then you can make sa more sound decisions and you're not just simply saying, oh, well, um, the, they told us to, this is what the, the, the system or the, the, those who govern um, these places we call countries, cities, states, town, um, what they, they tell us to do, and we have to abide by those rules. So to me, that, that was just a huge thing. And I had been studying the system like from in the 90s because, and I'm glad I did. I'm glad I got an understanding as to, to how this game works all over the planet. Um, because it, it just has allowed me to want to educate my kids um, who are, you know, adults now, but for them to understand how to navigate it, you're playing, and it's not that they're not going to play, but they know what they want to do and what they don't want to do, and all the supposed rules and laws and stuff like that. So to me, until that, those things happen in terms of people just waking up to that fact, it's very hard to say we are moving into this greater level of consciousness and awareness. It can lo look like it because we're good at we're good at camouflaging things. We like to feel like we know what's going on, and um, anything that keeps us from deep personal responsibility, self responsibility, because the system really doesn't encourage that anyway. System. <laughs> says we're we're responsible for you we're going to tell you what you need to do so um to me looking on at that then you, you can start to step into a greater level of uh spiritual awareness if that's what that's what you want to call it um you start paying attention to your inner guidance you your intuition um all your natural connection that's there that will tell you what to do when to do it where you know where to go all of those things that's to me that is what um has to happen and these guys on a bigger level judy are all playing they're playing a different a completely different game they're playing something completely different than what your average person is playing and then the game is just deeper and deeper and deeper because at the end it always somehow goes right back to secret societies and uh all of these other systems that are in place it always goes so that was my phone <laughs> <laughs> as they often ring <laughs> yeah yeah okay so um but uh, please you you said something very important in your last sentence can and and it just uh slipped my mind when i picked up the phone so uh, it, <laughs> <laughs> i'm like it slipped both our minds um uh, which, well, I don't, gosh, I've talked about so many levels of this. I think that's what I was saying, the many levels. And um, it always leads back to these secret societies, these yeah. systems that, you know, we're not aware of. And it's not conspiracy. It's not hocus pocus. It's not woo woo. It's none of that. It's, it's none of that for anybody who wants to think that. And anybody who wants to think that that's the case, and, it's, and, and you're religious and the person is religious as well, then if, you know, if you've got your religion that you're attached to, then why isn't it not possible that, you know, we're dealing with, with folks who are operating in their own zone of, of, um, of, of secrecy on supposedly this spiritual or metaphysical level or, or however we want to term it it always goes back to that root of a, a handful of folks uh, who think that they're doing what needs to be done for the good of mankind or for the good of themselves, for whatever reason. They don't think that your average human being is intelligent enough anyway to, um, to manage themselves in a certain way or to even be given um the kind of some of those levels of information uh so they 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 do perceive humans most humans as uh, on a lesser level unless you're part of that elite and those that elite structure anyway it's it has many levels so it's not just one level up it's it's different levels of this 
construct that we're looking at. And I've often referred to it, Judith, as this pyramidal system, you know, this hierarchical system. And the folks at the bottom are, are the people who are completely on the more unaware people. Um, the people at the bottom are generally people who um, who offer less, you know, financially. They're not the the billionaires. They're generally not, but they are the foundation upon which those people stand. Those are all the workers, all the you know, the those people. They all at the bottom, and they are they hold up the bottom of the pyramid, and then everybody else and it gets it gets narrow it gets narrow all the way up to the top all these intermediary uh systems and and controllers and rulers and who they report to it goes pretty darn deep so ultimately in the end the game sort of um kind of goes off, off planet i mean you know we can't i'm not even gonna i never go into that anyway and talk about that because the truth of it is we need to deal with what's happening here right here right now this is what we need to do we need to deal with what is happening here right now in terms of our own awareness and not just run into this escape of you know um ets and and ufo okay we get that that's what's going on but my thing is if you can't figure it out here then you're just going to what get taken advantage of even more mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. you know because a lot of times these these beings have higher levels of technology and they have a, an awareness that most human beings don't have about themselves and about what's possible so we need to get it together here first uh, that's what i see yeah um and I guess sometimes the regular people, they get a glimpse of um, these two games that are going on. One example today, I read that uh, we had another scandal in uh, France about mm. um, sex abuse of the Catholic Church, child abuse. And I guess the figures are in the hundred thousands. So now they, um wanted to um go to the european court for human rights <laughs> and what did the court do they dismissed the case because they said the vatican has uh, immunity because it is a sovereign state they cannot mm -hmm. sue right absolutely it's there it's its own country mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. And there, these are examples where it gets very obvious that a very minute um, amount of people, they are playing a totally different game. It's a, oh, completely different. I mean, yeah, completely different. And so they handle people completely different. Uh, even the rules, even the economic rules, money rules are are very different. There's the rules for the people who uh, fall below um, a certain level of money potential um, or just value or worth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's, you know, rules for those who are on the other side of that. So it, it, it's really wild in what we are told. We, we're given rules of what to do, how to handle how to how to behave don't tell lies don't you know don't kill don't you know all of those things but that does that rule really apply to those on this no exactly it doesn't it's just for the underlings <laughs> for, for the peasants mm, yeah. i mean it's not it's not funny but it is it's like you have to laugh because um what else are you gonna do but you know you're looking on at it and you're like yeah this is this is what it is and and they are allowed to do it why people this is what people don't get the system is only what it is because people have allowed it to be that there's not enough people that are aware enough to say no whether it be to this moment or to anything else that they've done 
they they have a handle on controlling people's minds, how they think, um, their fears, you know, wh what direction they would like people to navigate their minds uh, into thinking. And so you find that, yeah, that's the only reason why you get maybe 10 people who can continue to, to be in power and control millions or billions of people because the psychology of people have been studied. It's, mm -hmm. it's understood, you know, how to, how to handle people. We see it right now. All you have to do, all they had to do was push fear, like fear, fear, fear. I mean, and, and, and what do people, what are human beings afraid of? Not being alive, mm -hmm. not existing, dying. It's the greatest way to get folks. They, people will fall in line if they think you can save them. Um, because they're programmed, we're programmed for a savior. That's why we're always looking, even in all these different uh, religions, mm -hmm. they're always looking for somebody to come back. Somebody's going to come back and save them. Someone is always going to save them. And the system is set up that way. Yeah. Just do what we tell you and we'll make sure you're okay. We're going to save you. Well, mm -hmm. how's that working right now? <laughs> uh, like, how's that working? You know, all the different, oh yeah, do this. And you'll be okay. Oh yeah, no, we changed our mind. Now, now do this. D you know, Simon says jump on you know your one leg, your left leg. Oh, Simon says jump on your left leg and raise your right arm. And, you know, and it just goes on and on. And people forget what they had told them previously. Even when when the system changes it mi its minds and and says, oh, you know, um, yeah, we. This is what we now want you to do. People forget, well, wait a second. Didn't you tell us a while back that we didn't need to do this? We didn't, we need to, didn't need to do all this with our face. We didn't need to do that at all. And so what, what I find is that what, what people do, what the general public do, the ones that are really acquiescing under fear, they will come up with an excuse for the system. They go, well, you know, they, they told us that because they didn't know at the time, they didn't understand. So, um, but now that they know, that's why they changed their minds. They always will come up with an excuse for any <laughs> change that the system decides to make overnight. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's crazy. I don't think they sleep. I don't think these people sleep. It's like by the next morning, you're sleeping. And by the time you get up the next morning, there is some new rule, some new craziness. And, you know, people, people acquiesce because they're scared. And, and we want to have compassion. I do want to make sure that people understand that because there's compassion there because of the, I understand the fear, but fear is born out of ignorance. Fear is born out of confusion people pulling you in two or three different directions. You're not sure what, you know, what to believe. Um, and so I, I understand how people do get in that situation, but we have to center ourselves. We have to center ourselves and realize if you do believe in, uh, you know, God or whatever it is you believe in, how do you believe in your God and not take a moment to just sit with yourself and go, okay, direct me, give me, direction people's direction are coming from external it's external it's outside not inside mm. not inside where that still voice that that voice that quiet voice that is no voice you get that feeling and you just know and you trust that not the people outside you got to trust what you're feeling in here that's where we have to start coming home to yeah do you subscribe? <laughs> I guess you are not, <laughs> but I will ask anyway. Do you subscribe to the idea that uh, humanity is inherently evil, that the evilness is our uh, natural state and that we have constantly to fight against it? Oh, well, we have, we have both. This is the mm -hmm. right. This is the ride here, you know, and as soon as people stop trying to polarize like that, like you make it lopsided, this is the ride. The ride is we get to come here and be human beings. And that means any and everything. Now, 
during that journey, you know, for those who believe in reincarnation and coming back however many times, there is a moment where some maybe different time cycles may wake up and start to see the see the game differently where we don't inflict certain behaviors on other people not because it's good or bad but because it is no longer necessary we behave the way we do or treat each other in what we would define as maybe evil uh ways or um whatever hor horrific ways those things are born out of fear they're born out of trauma they're born out of issues there are things that are there that are running in our subconscious mind that um that cause people to react the way that they do the way they behave the way that they do and so much of our action is based on the need to survive we do whatever to survive you know we'll throw the other person under the bus to survive uh, so when we start realizing that there is a, a deeper navigation and that we're okay like we don't we don't need to try to do that we we are okay then that is part of the journey is waking up to that and then that changes not because you're trying to be a good person because when a lot of times people try to be a good person it becomes this pretend mm -hmm. it's not real mm -hmm. oh you know love everybody and i i say you you can't do those things until you understand and you take ownership of self and you're not afraid of facing yourself and all that you have done and just realizing that I behave that way because that was my understanding at the time. And you start to shift away from, from that kind of thinking and that behavior. Um, but, but it's not about just going, um, I'm, you know, that person is evil. I want to be, or I'm, I'm a good person. The barometer, the, 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 um, the gauge for being a good person is also a construct. So mm -hmm. pretty much everything we have, it's just been prescribed. These are protocols and construct. What does a good person look like? Well, there's these list of things. And so we need to understand how much of what, how we, we think and behave and really been based on uh, this prescribed way of thinking and understanding and our parents passed it on and on and on. So most people don't know who they are authentically. Mm -hmm. They don't know who they are authentically because we've been living according to collective conditioning, collective behavior, collective mask. We have to wear a mask, you know, good, bad. We want people to see how wonderful we are. And it's all of those things. And we can just free ourselves. We can just free ourselves from all of that and just sit centered. It would make such a difference. The depression would go down. You know, all those things of depression and a lot of those things are coming from um, much of the things that I mentioned. You know, um, it's, it's a lot of pressure when, we, when we're unable to, to live our authentic self. And I just wrote a piece yesterday and I put it out yesterday. It's on the website now, um, you know, about when basically when life feels like it, it has no meaning. And to, I, so I, I encourage your listeners to, to read it, to, to look at it, but it kind of sums up some of this. Um, and so people do feel they have no meaning, no purpose, no value, that stuff will start pulling you down. And we see this moment in time right now um, with ice, you know, people st it's still a level of isolation and people can get out and all of that, but there is still so much um, that has changed and the struggles and we're not hearing about all the suicides and um, the depression rate and the, the abuse rate, the child abuse rate and all of that. We're not hearing about that, but then you're telling me about, um, the Vatican mm -hmm. and this that's been going on for forever, for the longest while this has been going on, this behavior. And because of who they supposedly are, because they have such a strong hold 
as far as the religious aspect, which, which, which intertwines with politics, uh, they're able to get away with it. And incidentally, I'm not sure if you know this, and I, I, I don't have all the details because it's been so long since I've even tried to mention this, but one of the things Jordan Maxwell actually had shared some time ago is the, um, uh, it's like a treaty or contract or agreement that the Pope is like, is a stand-in for Jesus Christ mm -hmm. um, until he gets back. Because since he is Lord of the world and he's supposed to own everything, then the Pope is standing in sort of holding, you know, his, his spot until he gets back. How interesting. I'm just doing a sequel with somebody on Unum Sanctum. Oh, really? Uh, this uh, contract, yeah. Yeah. It, it, so it, it's, it's really interesting. So, that, you know, that's the whole, the whole thing. And in looking on at that, so supposedly when Jesus comes back, then, then they give him back his, all his stuff. <laughs> yeah right which is which is which is all the people which no it includes the people mm. he owns the people and, and the souls yeah all of it all of it so that's a much deeper subject oh my gosh it's just so deep it's just so deep about human beings and and who we are and what we are and uh you know who's running stuff and it's just just a lot just a lot and there's a, um, uh, he's dead now. Um, I didn't even realize that until maybe a few months ago, David Graber, who wrote the book um, 5,000 Years Before Debt, I think is the name of the book. And talking about um, what, what, is, what was understood that your, your life is a debt, considered a debt unto the gods. So, basically when you look at it so when you die you're giving it back you're paying this debt and then when you look at your you know this borrow because you borrow i mean trust me all of this is tied into our whole money structure system it, it all of it it's all the same the languaging the formula the all of it it is so incredibly ridiculously deep and people are just asleep in it because they're under hypnosis they're mesmerized and that's how the, it's the only way the game could work like that though so they have to keep putting things out to there to keep people in that state of sleep not waking up not coming out of the the hypnosis or the spell um rather not coming out of the spell so and and the rest of us they're just made to look crazy yeah, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, the, 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 the weirdos. Yeah, yeah. Look at the weirdos. Look at the nutcases. <laughs> In the meantime, the inmates are running the asylum. <laughs> That's who's running the asylum. All the inmates. Um, so it's um, it's big. I know. I just kind of went into a whole bunch of stuff, but it's so hard to talk about any of this without addressing some of the other things that doesn't get addressed because it's just that big. It's the yeah. only reason why they can continue to do what they do. At the end of the day, it's people. People are the ones that are allowing it to continue. When, if there's enough people that say no, those few people that run things can't do, there's not a darn thing they could do. Nothing they could do. Oh, are you but gonna they can't. <laughs> Huh? But they can. The, no, no, that's what I'm saying. Not if you have, not if you had like a whole country of people that said no to something. You think those five or ten people could do anything? They can't. Yeah. They they really couldn't. It's too many people. How are you gonna put millions of people uh, up against uh basically the ratio? I'm going I'm going ten people or five people five people basically to to uh, the, that's sort of the ratio i'm making up but no if everybody sat down and and we've seen it in different situations we've seen it if everybody just said no no we're not flying no we're not doing anything do you know how fast stuff would change because 
it would all come to a stop. So what would, would collapse. happen? Yeah. It would collapse. Their money, no money. Oh my God. That, that's a big thing. Oh, no, my God, we can't control the people. That's why they keep everybody divided. This is precisely why it's happening like that, why the, the division of people is being encouraged so that we don't um, unite. So that the uniting is, is, is very little, very minimal, and, mar and, and, and shown in the media a very small, big um, protests that go on. A lot of times we don't see it in other countries. We don't see it. So this handful of people um, operate, they've been doing this for such a long time, uh, brilliantly in managing, because that's what it is. They're, they're, they've got a hell of a sales star, staff, marketing team, um, you know, CEO, all the big executives marketing this stuff. Now, also, at least here in the United States, and I'm probably in other places too, but the United States is such a prime player uh, in all of this. But when you look at what I'm saying in terms of the few people that run everything, then you look at how kids are sort of, you know, watched to some degree up to getting into college and getting into their fraternities and sororities. And, and those serve a purpose because they're usually, you're, you're, you're sort of becoming part of a network, also being trained to take leadership roles, to take leadership roles in corporations and to uh, take leadership roles in politics even in and take leadership roles in Hollywood. If you look in at a lot of these actors, it's amazing how many of them have really gone to Ivy League schools. So it's, again, it's a bigger, um, very delicately construct, constructed system so that it's almost to some degree invisible in, in certain areas, certain aspects of it, that people don't see, but they're trained. People are, you know, they're groomed. They're groomed to take these leadership roles and to network. I mean, depending on you know, what's, what's fraternity or sorority you're part of, uh, it's, you know, it's like a, a little club and you want look out for each other. It's all cliquish, yeah. all we, cultish. Yeah, and then also we have the, uh, World Economic Forum and their Young Global Leaders uh, program. And uh, most of uh, very, uh, yeah, pop popular, not in the sense that, but everybody, let's say everybody knows them, yeah? They're aware of them, right? Yeah, like uh, Sarkozy and uh, Macron and Tony Blair and Gordon Brown and Bill Gates and, mm -hmm. and Merkel and uh, Zuckerberg and mm -hmm. even Putin, yeah? Oh, yeah? All of them went oh. through that program, Young Global Leaders. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and folks, your average person just, they hear it, but maybe they hear it and they just go, mm, okay, well, nothing I can do about that. You know, let me go back to sleep. Let me just, don't wake me up. Don't wake me up. Leave me alone. <laughs> and so, you know, we're, we've been witnessing almost like a Jim Jones moment, you know, with all this Kool-Aid drinking that's gone on. Um, but I think, yeah, just, I think it's real important that people real, recognize this, the system structure and trained leaders and what they get and what they belong to um, and where you stand, where are you on this scale? They give you a dream, particularly here in the US, you know, you get the dream, the American dream that's constructed by someone else, a dream that's been put out there. It's like, who put the dream together? Eh, nobody really knows, nobody really pays attention. It's just the American dream um, of, of what the successful life looks like, ideas of success, that's all orchestrated. And then, you know, we, we all sort of like little rats in a hamster wheel trying to get to that, whatever that model of success is, we want, we want that. We, want, we don't want to be down here, that much we know. The goal is to try to get up to at least, uh, you know, a couple levels up, maybe a level up, maybe you might not make it to the middle, but look. 
and that's you know it's all orchestrated and i remember when my younger son was in high school and he was 15 and i didn't i knew but i didn't really get what he was saying until later on and he said to me he says they're not really teaching us anything he goes this is this is just a big indoctrination center <laughs> yeah i know it's like years later i go wow he says, it's just a big indoctrination center. And then he followed it up and said, to train you to be obedient when once you get out there in the world, in the system. Yeah. That's what he said at 15. And uh, to train you, you know, dogs are being trained. You educate oh, yeah. humans. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, just look on at, you know, look, look on at, at, at some of that and, you see that it's a similar it's a similar concept as the way um, people are being treated and everybody's if you're not one of them you're you're treated it's a different level of slavery it's slavery but it's it's a different level it doesn't you don't have the shackles but you have the shackles um you know there's so much it's it's the shackles are on the mind mm. and um and freedom is described for us. Freedom is defined for people. So they don't even know what freedom is, yeah. you know, because it's already defined for you. So people think that that's what freedom is. <laughs> you, you know, we're born technically free, but then we are born into a system. We end up signing up to be part of a system. And the way things are now with the expansion of technology, um, Judith, it, it's, it's, even more difficult now for people to be to separate from um, being on the grid because everything is so networked together now so tied together that it's it's tough everything you want to do you you know obviously driving a car this that you use a computer and it, it, you're just all tied up in it mm -hmm. you're just you're just all a part of it so this is not doom and gloom either. This is not doom and gloom. Everything I'm saying, I love technology. I love aspects of technology. So make no mistake. But all I'm saying to people is be an awake game player. Be an awake game player. There's some things that you're like, oh man, there's nothing I can really do about this. I can see around it. I can't see around it. But the point is that you are aware of what is being done. That's it. Just to be aware of what is being, is being done puts you steps ahead because you will still see where choice, where you have choice points where someone else will not see that they have choice. Yeah. And uh, what you just said about uh, separating each other, going against this group, against that group, you know, it starts with Democrat, Republican, and then oh, we yeah. have straight, gay, LGBTQ, yeah. ba, 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 ba. I'm How so many? tired of it. It just yeah. wears me out. I can't keep up. I don't yeah. even know what I am anymore. I don't even know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. What is my name? Who am I? Yeah, it's so many categorizations of people and you know, we keep falling into it further, especially the political language is what gets me. Just the political language, they keep changing it. I'm so tired of it. Left, right, center, liberal, uh, Democrat, Republican. Uh, what else do, do what is it, you center, left, center, right? I'm like, oh my God, you know, the GOP, the this, the that. It, it's like, why? To confuse people? Mm -hmm. To keep people con confused? Um, you know, and it's like, you're thinking, oh, okay, well, the right, well, the right sounds like the right, but is the right really left? <laughs> it's just so, <laughs> is left really right? Mm -hmm. It's just insanity and people buy into it. Generational, um, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, political, um, office sides, you know, generational Democrat, generational Republican isn't this about what makes sense to you and not you know not so much focused on this is what i am but is are the people in office 
are you do you agree with the behavior not loyalty to but can you look at this any of whatever and determine if this is humane does this feel right what's going on can we just get to that place instead of being so um programmed you know so programmed to follow along follow whatever the protocols the trends are of family or uh whatever it's that can we wake up to our sense of of self mm. and our own personal values of what makes sense can we just do that yeah if we could do that we wouldn't treat we wouldn't hurt each other so it's very good that I have you uh, on today because another thing is um, that I find highly frustrating and that is the entire uh, critical race theory. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> I have, I, honestly, mm -hmm. I, I know it's kind of, that they've talked about it. I just haven't paid attention to it. Mm -hmm. I'm just so tired. <laughs> I'm yeah. so I'm yeah. literally just so worn out on it. I'm just so tired. I took a break for a couple of days. And I, I at one point, I was like, I can't, I, I don't even, because I, I would post. I'm like, I can't even post anymore. I, I, I'm not even going to look. I don't even want to know what else is going on. I'm just um, kind of done. I think, um, I don't even know. I, I, I have to look into it more. I know my husband brought it up to me as well. Um, I think that the, I, the, the racial aspect of all of this, if I think if in just families, if there was clarity um, in, in, in personal ownership for one, truth, historical truth, that's another big piece, historical truth. Um, and, and I think, again, this personal sense of value, we wouldn't even have to be having this that conversation. We wouldn't have to debate about any of it. It's become a competition as to the suffrage of a group of people, groups of people. Um, and this and and racial uh, inferiority and racial superiority and i think that the fire is being stoked by the same people who want all the division to take place mm -hmm. keep us divided among each other and to keep us um in the fight as to either who suffered more which group of people suffered more um or whatever whatever the blame and the behavior is in the meantime those who committed these atrocities are are just back there doing you know poking the bear they're the ones putting the stuff doing this whether they're ancestors or whether they're just part of the same kind of clique they're back there quietly they're the ones getting the rest of us like a mob yeah but what I find uh, really irritating now, I li listened briefly to a conversation between um, two uh, yeah, ladies who were doing the work for critical race theory. Mm -hmm. And whenever they talk about a white person, it is who is doing the work. Mm -hmm. It is a racist, non-racist. But the word racist has to be there because they are white. And that is such bullshit. Anybody can be racist, regardless of your skin color. Yeah, and I think that's where from that that's why that becomes a touchy subject because um there is let's tell you how much I've really like paid attention, but there is racism and then there is another word it's not bigotry but um um supremacy mm -hmm. um they're all of those and i think i think that that's where some of the divide is coming in uh it has to do with a look at who 
who who has been who has passed themselves off as the superior race and have had more hand in being able to do you know and control and and do those things so i think that's where a lot of that is coming in um and 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 i i honestly i honestly have not and i know people are looking at me as a black person i really have not i have not focused on it not that it is not an important conversation i think that it is an important conversation um but i think because i did i saw so much behind the madness and the nonsense and instead of it bringing people closer it seems like it's just creating a bigger divide <clears throat> yeah exactly that is uh, what it is and children are being taught uh, in school to hate each other and there yeah. are schools who are segregating um, now uh, pupils uh, along the lines of skin color a, yeah. uh, a mother wanted to um, she went to school and said I would like uh, my son to change to this class because uh, the teacher is better for him and the answer was no, that is not open for white uh, pupils. Oh, yeah. See, I, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm, again, you know, it's just, I'm just so, I'm just so worn out on all of it because there's a, I guess it, it was supposed to make things better. But at this particular time of multiple kinds of division of people, mm -hmm. all this seems to all have just, added and compounded everything else so even if there was even if there is true sense and reason for any of it there's just so much of this right now that it's having a, the adverse response um with people but i i didn't know like we were you talking are you talking there like like in germany no in, in the talking US. in general in different mm -hmm. places um, he, he, no, with, he, the, with, the, with the child, with, with that situation. Yeah, that was in the U.S. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I just really have not dived into it. So all. meaning, you know, the parents didn't even know that the uh, school separated <laughs> the whites from the colors. <laughs> yeah, really? And, and, and yeah, they didn't ask. They was didn't it, ask. was it, you're talking white and um black people and mm -hmm. just people of color mm -hmm. just people of color separate yeah, they classes. put them in separate classes and it came out because this one mother wanted to have her child working with a different teacher she asked if uh, her son could be transferred into that class and uh, the answer was no that class is not open to white people wow okay well, i didn't know about that uh, okay, so oh, so the word I think was prejudice. That's what I was mm. looking at. Okay, and I think that's that's the understanding. It's like um, I think black people feel that okay, yeah, people can be prejudiced, but I think um, racist I think gets associated more with power. I mean, people can probably look that up, but I think it gets associated with power with who has had the upper hand and i think that you know the separating of kids now if you if you happen to send your child to a school that is all whatever that is then that's what it is if you send your school your child to an all black school all white school then that's what the school is but when you have a mix a school that has a mix of kids that's tough on the child because the child gets is now caught up in this segregation within the school, you know, within the school again. Mm -hmm. um, but but children, you know, they play with each other. That's what they, I mean. They, yeah, they, they, yeah. They, they don't, they don't have, know. Yeah, they, they don't it's know the grown-ups who teach them yeah. to look at a person of a different skin color in a different way yeah. if we wouldn't teach them that nonsense oh yeah well I, you know a story comes to mind when my again my younger son um was in school and he might have been maybe i don't know maybe nine 
it could be about maybe nine. And my children were very outspoken because I taught them to be outspoken, but at the same time, respectful. And, and, and I, and I always encourage conversation. So they were, we had an open relationship where they would tell me whatever was going on. Anyway, um, my younger son, there were maybe, maybe a couple, maybe two or three, I think maybe kids that were black, maybe in his class at the time. And he had a tendency to speak up for other kids. He didn't care whether you're white, black, pink, or green. He felt the teacher was unfair. That's what he would do. He would speak up. Uh, And so there was an incident, and it's been such a long time. I don't remember clearly what the incident was. And his teacher kind of lashed out at him. And I think she did on a couple of occasions, lashed out at him. And we talked to, I think, the principal. I think I talked to her. And then we decided, the principal, and they said, okay, well, let's have a meeting. And so we went and had a meeting with the principal. It was just me and my son at the time and sat down and talked to her. And he expressed himself. And so we decided that, okay, well, we're going to have a meeting with the teacher now, and I'm going to allow him to tell her exactly how he felt. And so that's basically what we did, except for I don't think she was ready for what he said. Uh, she, she was a white teacher, and he did, he was very, uh, what's the word? Yeah, he wasn't rude at all. You know, he was very respectful. And he told her, Mrs. Such and such, um, you know, I, I feel that you are prejudiced. That was the word he used. And she was just, she was really just, oh my God, she was very put off by it. And so she, she said, well, I don't know. Well, do you, you know, do you want to go to another class then? You know, you want to go into another teacher's class? And he, and he said to her, he said, no, he says, you're a good teacher. Um, I'm choosing to stay here, but this is how I feel. And to me, I mean, I stood back and I allowed, I didn't coach him because I didn't have to, because that's the way my kids were. And he expressed himself clearly and he turned around and gave her honest fact that you're a good teacher, but this is what I think. And no, I don't want to leave your class. I'm going to be here. And so for the rest of the time, um, they yeah she didn't bother him they were they were okay all the way through to high school you know so when he graduated i remember she was there and she did then she says ah i see you graduated so then they both had a chuckle Mm -hmm. but the bottom line of it is that i think we have to get to that point where we allow those conversations we allow the children to, to have that a kind of say so that's not influenced by the parent, but the child needs to have their own opinion, form their own opinion of how they feel about uh, a teacher, their classroom, whatever, and have those conversations because those are the, the, they're going to be the people of tomorrow. And we're trying to shape them into something else right now to create this other weird version of tomorrow. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know this uh, magazine Vogue, yeah? Vogue? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So um, there's also a teen Vogue. Right, right. Uh-huh. And uh, what I saw recently was an article about <laughs> um, the reproductive organs of a non-prostate owner. What? The, yeah, the entire article. I'm so lost right now. <laughs> the, the this entire, is outside of the, what I learned at school. <laughs> the, the entire article does not use the word man or woman, not once. And um, women yeah. are now um, non prostate owners. Yeah. And I, that's, that's a whole other story story right there that's a whole other show we probably get kicked off i the that piece for me with the woman thing it's it's so annoying Mm -hmm. to me because 
Here it is for however many hundred years, thousands, I'm not sure, right? But for a while, women have had to deal with being treated as fourth class citizens, always being reduced in, in intellect and in um, capability and in what, whatever way um, as, as property, because at one point, you know, women were money, you know, for, for a, a, a family, mother, father, father could, you know, give his daughter, oh, can't pay this debt. Here's my daughter. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so this is, again, this is all very deep too. So when I, see all that women have dealt with and somebody comes along now and tries to reduce all that we deal with as women as if oh anybody can do this it's so easy anybody can just uh become a woman and it's okay not a problem that is i think is is a travesty and i think shame on us. And I don't think that this has to do with anything about being offend, uh, offending anyone for the choices they're making. I am fine with any choice anybody wants to make for themselves. Who cares? That's what you want to do. That's fine. But to me, everything else becomes a more, cos more costume because I, can, I cannot tell you what it is to be a man. I have an idea because mm -hmm. of what I think I see. It looks like that's what it is to be a man. I'm going to talk deeper. I'm going to wear, you know, put on a certain clothes. I'm going to act a certain way. But you don't know. You don't, I, I don't know. No differently than the reverse. Mm. You can look on and you can see. You can, okay, that's what it looks like to me of what it is to be a woman. But unless anybody is, has gone really born into the experience, you don't know. You don't no, know. I couldn't teach my voice to be, to be um, you know, I, I did the best I could when I got divorced, but I couldn't teach them to be men. I could teach them the best way I know how, but I don't know anything about being a man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm clear about that same the, the reverse so i think that we have to look from that standpoint not about all this other stuff of offending anyone nobody's there's nobody you're not offending anyone you're just calling a spade a spade and that foolishness of um not wanting to say even a breastfeeding woman i, I that's chest the other feeding thing. woman yeah. chest feeding mm -hmm. And all of that madness mm. and, and people who buy into it, they need to snap out of it. You need to wake up. You need to wake up. You just yeah. need to wake up because all everything else is just, it, it's, it's going to be, I'm, some, I'm sure somebody's going to be upset with me. I'm not saying anything that's not true though. It, if everything else becomes cosmetic, it becomes, it becomes costume. It becomes an interpretation, your own personal interpretation of, of the idea of what you think this is. I can no more be a chicken. I can try to be, you know, well, put on a thing and I'm going to try to cluck and do all the things like a chicken, but I will never know what it is to be a chicken because I'm not a chicken. Yes. It's just, you just can't. And there's been so many atrocities that women have dealt with and continue to deal with the in, in in like the Middle East with how women are treated. And it just goes on and on and on. We can anybody can do it. Anybody, it's so easy to be a woman. Anybody can do it. Yeah, yeah. And then you have the so-called awake and aware crowd that are lecturing you uh, on. Yeah, well, but the Taliban are right about women. Oh, you always get you always get a few idiots that yeah, yeah. Um, are supporting supporting that. And it all comes from what? From religious beliefs, context, and a lot of that stuff. Mm. A lot of the stuff that, that, that they're pulling on, a lot of it is, is misinterpretation, reinterpretation, um, just 
a lot of change dialogue. There's so much. There's so much that's not that's no longer um, interpreted in 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 probably whatever, however it was written or meant or all of that. And so here we are. Here we are with it. And I, I usually I stay away from the conversations a lot of times, you, you know, which I, it's probably the only show I've actually mentioned about the woman piece, but I, I just I've stayed away from it. I, I probably I think I did one women's workshop. Mm. And, a, and a big reason for that, Judith, is that I operate. I operate totally as a just as a being embracing this body that I come in as a woman. And I am so confident and comfortable with it that I so don't care what anybody else has to say, male or whatever. I like, like it's, it's unimportant to me because this is what I'm doing. This is who I am. This is what I'm doing. And I am not worried about trying to compete with you, trying to do any of that. I'm, I'm just so unconcerned because you're so tiny to me. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> you're, you're so it's true. You're so tiny to me because if you're thinking that way, you must be too tiny for me to talk to. You, you've got to be too tiny. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and 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 that's out of fear. Those behaviors rise out of fear. Yeah. And I hope I'm able to eventually get that documentary done. But, you know, I was working on a documentary called Feared Woman. Feared Woman, a history of power, politics, and control in tracing. This is way, this has nothing to do with the Me Too movement, if anybody's thinking that. Because, um, you know, that's nothing to do with that. That's, a, that's also a whole other show. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing. I, this was um, something that was in effect years before any of this and it has nothing to do with that what it has to do with just tracing the history of when this madness began with women um that women became these you know fourth fifth class citizens and why why is there so much fear about the women and the power of women we, we know some of that but i'm saying just documenting um, some of this as to, to why, because we need that kind of intelligence. Now we need that kind of education to, to be able to show that as opposed to what we're seeing right now. You know, we want, we want to be neutral. We want to get, it doesn't matter. Nature created a formula and somehow did, there's a positive and a negative charge that got created, the male and female. It's, it's, it's just frequencies, it's two charges. It's not even anymore um, where we're getting stressed out about, you know, the man and the woman. It's still too, that's what's coming in when they come in. I don't, I don't care how much you, you change it after, that's fine. Yeah, and you still will have the same DNA. The DNA will stay the same. And <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that's just the way, every now and then you get somebody that comes in um, with, with both. Mm -hmm. Because like everything else, like a car coming off of an assembly line, you get uh, 2000 cars that come out just, you know, with the, on the right formula and structure, the, uh, the, right in the ideal, the correct engineering and patterning for that car. Let me be cautious as to how I word this. But then the engineering and, and, and bits of the programming may be different for whatever reason on one of those cars it just it just happens it, it happens and why are we so afraid to acknowledge some of these things we're so afraid to acknowledge it every because it, everything gets turned into um oh you're you're you know you're you know what phobic you're this you're that and it has nothing to do with that i i just simply look at the formula look at the formula throughout nature you know you, your battery, you start your car, you need a positive and negative charge. You plug something in. And it's just the way it is. It's a formula. That's all. It's a formula, people. That's how nature allowed the, the repopulation of the, the planet. You have to find nature had to devise a way so that we could keep populating the place. Um, and that was the formula. That's yeah. it. 
And um, I would certainly not change my language. <laughs> I will call a man a man. I will call a woman a woman. And if the entire world freaks out about that, I couldn't care less. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm, yeah, I'm not even vibing on any of what they're talking about. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not even. I, first of all, I can't even remember anything else. This, you know, them, us, it, I, I, I don't even know, you know, that that languaging doesn't make you not be what you are. <laughs> yeah. just, it doesn't matter how you change it. You're still going to be that. Mm. When I look at all those issues that we just briefly touched on. Um, to me, it is one gigantic confusion game. It is. And this is the time for it. The right now, this paradigm um, is in a, you know, said what I call an identity paradigm. Mm -hmm. um, this paradigm right now is about identity, which is why we're dealing with all of this categorization. And it has to happen. So let me say that too. Everything that is happening is part of um, a, a reformation on in the matrix, but a reformation also in the not in the cycle and evolution of uh, the planet. And we are going to get folks who are in an aware state, um, a more heightened aware state. And we're going to get people who are maybe in between and we can get people who are just absolutely asleep and say, don't bother me, don't wake me up. And the dust will settle with this at some point. Yeah. The dust will settle and everything that, all the chaos that's happening right now is the dust storm that has to happen before the dust settles. And when it settles, which, you know, where are you? Which, which side are you on? What's the category you're in? That's how it's gonna fall. It's gonna settle and people are gonna be in their specific space positions when it settles. Mm. So that's, that's what's coming. It eventually will happen. In the meantime. Yeah, we have uh, Neptune still in Pisces until 2026. And yeah. Neptune in Pisces has a lot to do with uh, collective insanity, delusions, and so on and so forth. So yeah. I, I do not expect to see it going away quickly. It might it's gonna be, be subtle. Yeah, and it, it might be with us for a while, but uh, even this will pass. Yeah, eventually it will, because everything is about cycles. You know, we, we pass through cycles. And um, I think when the dust settles, because there's so much change that's happened, a lot of it is going to be subtle for people. People, we've had over, what, almost six, 600 days of, um, of all of this happening. Mm -hmm. And how many days do they say it takes to, uh, to form new habits? 21. Well, we way beyond that. So <laughs> new habits have been formed by all of us. Um, many of these things we will not even notice. Why? Because we have had this long to become something else. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we're going to see. People are going to be something else. They are already that because of the habit that's been formed. And the system knew that. They understand that. So when the dust settled, everything will appear in a level of what the word we will use will with is normality but we will barely remember some of how things were because our brains are being rewired and reprogrammed and there's been enough time for us to to forget to forget about some things about life and accept the new version, the new normal of it. And that's what's that's where we are right now. Yeah, and those who are born into it, they will have no recollection. No, they will at not. All. And, but, then, but then that's why I, I, for years I've pointed this out to people. I said, you know, who we are now when we're born is always just the result. We are the um, result of, um, thousands of years or millions of years. This is us right now. So we don't even know what we were before. We don't know this, this, we just happen to be here witnessing. We're in the midst of what will, what's gonna be in history books. Mm -hmm. We just happen to witness it, but we have no idea how we've been changed, how the human race 
have been changed many times because every time when somebody is born into reality, when you're born in, in the world, that's your normal moving forward. And everything else is, is hearsay, is something you read, is what you're told, and your world is perfectly normal. So I've looked at that, and that made me curious even more as to what changes have actually taken place You know, years ago. Who were we? That's why we're so asleep right now. That's why we're so asleep because this, these same things, different, done differently, this sort of re-engineering has happened a number of times. Yeah. That's, that's how we, be, and, and we fight for our familiar. That is true. We will always fight for our familiar, just like the generation being born now, 20 years from now, they will fight for their world like, oh, you know, that the atrocities, just like we're saying now, they will fight for it. They will fight for what is normal. And we are saying no to this because we remember what that was like, that kind of freedom. Some of us remember <laughs> before cell phones, before phones and, you know, mm -hmm. the wonderful less emergencies because you there was no cell phone to call anybody. You, e you either just had to wait um, till that person was home to call them on a landline. Uh, you wasn't you were, couldn't call anybody in the car. I mean, it, we had less emergencies. We were so much calmer. And um, so we we've wa we witnessed this before computers. We've witnessed so much of a simpler world, but we didn't know it was a simpler world because that was our normal. Yeah. And so, you know, here here we are right now. But this is a great time for expansion consciousness. It's a great time. It's a great, great opportunities to become masters, to test our skills, to test what we say we know, to put it into effect. This is the time. And this, this moment is in time is pushing us forward for those who will move because we have to stay in order to, to make things work. We have to stay ahead. We have to stay ahead in our brain power. We have to stay ahead in our uh, biology, we have to stay ahead in our awareness and our consciousness. We have to stay ahead of all of this. And this, mm -hmm. is, this is what this time is doing right now. So um, I, would, I don't want to keep you any longer because I know you're extremely busy. Um, <clears throat> but uh, now we have laid the foundation and um, so maybe you are willing to come back on and then we could talk about how to achieve um, higher states of consciousness and um, sure, we can how to do that, that in this uh, confused world. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, no, we can talk about that. But I think, you know, to leave people with this piece that mm -hmm. <clears throat> to step out of the fear and ask yourself in this moment, you know, who, you know, who am I? Catch yourself. The, the fact that you may be running around in your head all the time, you have to stop yourself and go, wait a second, what am I doing? What am I doing? You know, what, what's my fear? What is the fear that I'm having here? How influenced am I by what I'm hearing? How much of the media am I absorbing? You have to stop. You have to stop and, and get centered and just begin to commune with yourself and self-responsibility self-responsibility nobody's responsible for you you're responsible for yourself um and if you have small children or you know elderly people that you're responsible for those are their agreements you're responsible for them your children um and, and helping them to prepare for being responsible for themselves as they step out and you're teaching them how to be responsible for themselves even now as children self-responsibility is the name of this game we must become responsible for ourselves that means all of our actions um our, our our thinking all of that take back your mind don't rent out your mind anymore to anybody you've got to take back your um your power this is why we see all the superhero movies that's been coming for years then we see the zombie films that have been putting out for years so we've seen they've been showing us what you know what's happening and we've been conditioned and programmed for it so um 
you know, just wake up and recognize that that's where you are. This is not about fear. Keep, I cannot emphasize that enough. This is not about fear. It's about an opportunity to explore your own personal evolution. Yeah. Fantastic last words. I thank you so much, Sonia, thank for you. coming on. It's always great to chat with you and uh, to have a sound mind <laughs> on the show. <laughs> so oh that, my gosh, yeah. That was it. Uh, night yeah. flight for today with the wonderful Sonia Barrett. All links will be below. Stay safe and sound out there and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>